All right. Well, welcome to the uh, structure and representation of uh, Jordan algebras. Um, I'm going to be giving a series of lectures um, to try to understand the structure of Jordan algebras following Jacobson's book. So this is Jacobson's uh, wonderful book on structure representations of Jordan algebras. Um, my personal goal is to do this to understand a bit more about the structure of the um, Albert algebras and relations to, um, to exceptional groups. But of course, these um, Jordan algebras are just very interesting objects in their own right. So um, let me begin by just um, setting the stage uh, briefly. So um, the notion of a Jordan algebra is um, modeled on the following idea. You start with um, some associative algebra um, over some field F. And instead of considering the normal operation of multiplication on it, you consider this um, so-called Jordan product, um, which will write A lower dot B, and that's going to be um, one half AB plus BA, the, the kind of symmetrized uh, multiplication operation. Um, a endowed with this extra multiplication structure, or this new multiplication structure, is usually written A plus. So this is the underlying set of A um, together with its usual addition, but with this new multiplication, this lower dot multiplication. Um, so um, and this is kind of a recurring theme as we're going to go on. It, um, will be you start with some algebraic structure with some um, with some multiplication defined on it, and you look at some derived structures that you can that you can get from those operations. So we start out with the normal binary composition uh, multiplication, and we can define this new one, this lower dot one, which actually doesn't contain as much information as the original one does. You can't from this recover the original multiplication structure. But um, there's a lot of interesting structure that this thing encodes in its own right. Um, and we'll, you know, studying this will also give us insight about the original algebra, but moreover, um, it, it is just an interesting structure in its own right. Now, um, just some other uh, related examples. You know, if one starts with an associative algebra, one can also define um, some other kinds of operations, for example, like the operation A goes to A squared is a unary operation that's, um, that's you know, not unrelated to this. You could also write this as A lower dot A, at least in the case that the um, characteristic of the field is not 2. In fact, you know, when we write this operation, we must assume that the characteristic is not equal to 2, right? Um, okay, so there's the A goes to A squared operation. Um, the AB goes to AB minus BA is a familiar operation that one sees when studying Lie algebras. This is sometimes called the Lie bracket, written bracket AB. Um, another operation that will be important is this ABA operation. A comma B goes to ABA. If you're in an algebra that has a lot of invertible elements, then although this might not always be defined, the operation A goes to A inverse is also an oper a unary operation that carries a lot of structure. Okay, so, um, so Jordan algebras, as I said, are modeled on this operation. So what, in other words, what, you, what one tries to do is say, suppose one has an algebra A, with an operation which we can write as a lower dot b, which satisfies some of the same formal properties as this operation does if a was an associative algebra. Then what can you say about the structure of a and this lower dot operation? This is um, the right kind of structure that one defines um, for algebras over fields whose characteristic is not 2. If you have, a if you have an algebra over fields whose characteristic is 2, though, one generally does things a little bit differently. So, um, in um, 
in uh, arbitrary characteristic, um, we make the following definition. Um, a special um, Jordan algebra is um, a subspace, a vector subspace of an associative algebra A, which is closed under the operations um, A goes to A squared and AB goes to ABA. So this is the notion of a special Jordan algebra in general characteristic. Um, and one can define um, a homomorphism of special Jordan algebras to be a function from one special Jordan algebra to the other which satisfies um, the properties that sigma of the square is the square after doing sigma, so it commutes with doing squares, preserves the notion of squaring, and it also preserves the notion of ABAing, right? So sigma of ABA should be sigma of A, sigma of B, sigma of A. Now, um, just for the sake of, um, of practicing and getting used to playing around with these identities, let's make the following observation. If the characteristic is not equal to 2, then, a, then you can also define a special Jordan algebra to be um, a subspace of an algebra which is closed under this product a lower dot b is one half ab plus ba and one could alternately define a homomorphism to be a linear map which satisfies that if you do sigma on the lower dot you get sigma of a lower dot sigma of b okay how can we see this well the point is that you can write if the characteristic is not two, one set of operations in terms of the other one. So that is to say, if the characteristic is not two, then these two operations, a goes to a squared and a b goes to a b a, carry the same information as the operation a b goes to this a dot b. Okay. So. By way of proof. That these, um, that these alternate definitions are the same as the original ones, we'll note that, well, let's, let's suppose you have your, uh, these two operations. How can you get this operation? In fact, it's even better, even if you just know how to square, if the characteristic is not two, then you can recover a lower dot b. Because all you do is if you see what happens when you square a plus b, this is a squared plus b squared, uh, sorry, a squared plus ab plus ba plus b squared. And so if I were to um, subtract from that the a squared and the b squared, then you find that if I, so if I look at one half of a plus b squared, so that gives me one half of all this, and I subtract off one half of my a squared and one half of my b squared, then I've expressed in terms of my addition operation, my subtraction, this is the vector space structure, my squaring operation and multiplying by one half because my characteristic is not two, that makes sense, I've expressed the operation of a lower dot b. In other words, 
of AB plus BA. So, if I have a, um, a subspace which is closed under squaring, and my characteristic is not 2, then in fact I'm closed under doing all this because I'm a vector subspace, and I'm closed under squaring, so I'm closed under doing A dot B. Um, conversely, um, if you're closed under A dot B, well then you can write A squared as A dot A, right? I mean A dot A is one half A squared plus A squared, which if the characteristic is not two is a legitimate way of writing A squared. Um, so similarly, in terms of the homomorphism property, you can see that if you have sigma preserving squaring and sigma is a linear map, then applying sigma to both sides of this equation, you find that, um, that sigma of a lower of, of a dot b is the same as sigma of this whole side, but the sigma moves inside the squares. So that's the same, so sigma of this whole thing is sigma of that is sigma of that, but on the other hand, the sigma can move inside um, the addition, subtraction, and squaring, so that gives the same as one half, let me write the sigmas as exponents just to save space, a sigma plus b sigma squared minus one half a sigma squared minus one half b sigma squared which by the same identity again is um, a sigma dot b sigma. And so you see that if you have a linear map that satisfies this property, then it actually satisfies this property. As for um, this latter identity, AB goes to ABA, um, to make sense of that, what we want to see is that, for example, if you're closed under, well, so we, we can see that we can write the, this thing in terms of these two operations. In fact, we only needed this one. But for the converse, we need to show that we can write these operations in terms of the dot operation. Now, as I've mentioned up here, you can show that a squared can be written in terms of the dot operation very easily, right? a squared is a dot a. But how do I write the ABA operation in terms of A dot A? Well, it has to do with um, what happens if I look at, um, so A dot B, um, well, let me, just so I won't get confused, let me write this as um, B dot A, parentheses dot A. So let's see what happens if we do that. Actually, let me move up to the, let me erase some of this and move up to the top of the board. So we're trying to understand this operation, AB goes to ABA, and what we'll do is we'll play around with what happens if we look at B dot A dot A. I mean, this is something with two A's and a B in it. So we're going to see how can we use the dot operation to combine two a's and a b. Let's just see what happens. So you look at uh, b dot a dot a, that's um, one half uh, b a plus um, a b, and then dot a, and now I get a quarter of um, b a a, of multiplying by a on you know, this times that, b a squared plus um, a b a, and then with the a on the left. Um, plus ABA plus A squared B. Okay, now what we have here is a couple of these ABAs, and then we have something else that's basically the Jordan product of A squared and B. We have a factor of a fourth on the, on the front, which we'll have to kind of deal with, but what do we have? So we have, well, a fourth and then two of these guys gives us uh, one half of the ABA, and then left over we have a fourth of the of the b a squared a squared b, which is the Jordan product of b with a squared. Well, so that is to say, if one were to take this whole guy and multiply it by 2,
Um, then what would one get? You would get the um, ABA plus a half of, um, of B dot A squared. And oh, excuse me, not a half of B dot A squared. I'm, I got off a little bit here. It's one quarter of the um, B A squared plus A squared B. But one quarter of the b squared a plus a squared b, let's think about that as half of a half of it. A half of that is the Jordan product. Oh yes, and, and okay. So this this thing right here is um, one half of the b dot a squared. But then what I did was I multiplied everything by two, right? So two times that, multiply by two, multiply by two. So I don't have a one half anymore. I just have the b dot a squared. So that says 2 b dot a dot a, and if I subtract b dot a squared, that gives me a b a. Altogether, what we've done is we've expressed a b a in terms of the operations of, um, of, of, the dot, of the dot operation and the squaring operation, but of course, the squaring um, uh, can also be written in terms of the dot if my characteristic is not 2. So I can think about this as b dot a dot a, for example. So if you know how to do dots, lower dots, and you know that the characteristic is not 2, then you can rewrite a, b, a in terms of um, operations having to do with the dot. So that says that if the characteristic is not 2, then if you, have a, um, if you have a subspace which is closed under doing the dot, then it's also closed under doing this ABA operation. If it's closed under the dot, it's also closed under doing squaring, we've, sh we've shown. So altogether, if you're closed under doing this lower dot, you're closed under the operations um, A goes to A squared and AB goes to ABA. Conversely, because we've written things uh, in both directions, if you're closed under these two operations, you're closed under doing the dot. And so these two notions of what it means to be a special Jordan algebra and, a, and to have a homomorphism of special Jordan algebras um, give you the same definition if the characteristic is not two. Now, if the characteristic is two, I mean, I, sh we should, just, I should just comment that... Um, you know, you, one, might, one might ask, like, you know, we have these two operations, and we have the a, b goes to a lower dot b operation. If the characteristic, if the characteristic is not 2, then actually, we could have gone back and forth just between these two things. Because you can derive this product from just the squaring operation and the squaring from the dot. But if the characteristic is 2, um, of course, there's no back and forth to talk about, and this dot operation isn't, it doesn't even make sense. But what we would like is we would like enough information analogous to the, stru to the information contained by the dot to give us good structure theories. The squaring operation, if, if the characteristic is 2, does not actually give you enough, enough juice, enough information to really get a good structure theory. Um, so if the characteristic is 2, you really want to think about both of these operations. And in any case, we'll, we'll see the importance of the ABA operation um, as, as things move forward. Okay, that's enough for now.